guess you're next here. Make sure he gets the mic next, okay? Right here, thanks. Hi, good evening, my name is Maria. Earlier we heard that more money needs to be put into making the TTC more accessible, which also some of the newer candidates touched on as well. So my question is where is this going to come from and would we also be able to hear from the newer candidates when they be able to respond as well? Huh. Okay. Um, Maria, I want to make sure I understand your question. Where will the money come from to make these improvements to the TTC? Okay. Uh, who's going to, yes, Karen Stintz for, did, did we not? They just ran a big surplus, didn't they? I mean, did I not just read that? Well, so, yeah, we, we, did, we ran a surplus on the operating budget, and so my commitment is to keep fares stable and to not increase fares for next year and to use that money to make sure that the CTC remains affordable. We have a capital budget that is funded by the city for the TTC, and part of my vision is to bring the TTC and the transportation department under one authority called the Transportation Agency. And I have a plan over 15 years to raise between 1.2 and 1.6 billion dollars to invest in these kinds of initiatives. And we also have heard from the provincial government that they are going to help fund transportation initiatives as well. So if we make a commitment, and we have the political will, we'll make the right decisions to make the transit acceptable. David Sopnacki. Yes, the surplus is 168 million, but the amount of unfunded, um, uh, unfunded, job, uh, unfunded requirements runs into the hundreds of millions of dollars. It's just a huge, a huge, huge number, and that's why it's going to take major change. It's going to take not only talking about. Um, the LRT and the surplus. It's also going to talk about taxes. It's also going to need uh, changing the way we do things in the city, from the police uh, to the emergency services. We're going to need to make all of those changes to make sure that we have the funds available in order to deal with those things that we that we want in the city. Not only accessibility and health and, and um, uh, safety that we spoke of here, but also parks and cycling and all of the things that make our quality of life so very important. Olivia Chow. I have the uh, TDC capital budget next 10 years in front of me. And page 13 said that 58 new track buses, so the earlier figure was just one year, but in total, the 58 new track buses are delayed, and any prolonged delay in the procurement of buses will affect new trans ability to meet service and accommodate ridership growth. So I, I won't even read you the part about service upgrades, fix the elevators, and you know, fix the gap, and all of those things. All of this, close to $2.6 billion is unfunded. There's no money to it. So that's why I agree with Mr. Sanaki that we can't put in that billion dollars into the Scarborough uh, subway because we can build above ground better services, four more stop, four years faster, and a billion dollar less, then some of that money can actually go and buy new trans buses. I, I would take a different approach. So first of all, I believe the Scarborough Subway will be a good long-term investment. And secondly, I think if the first act you did as the mayor is to sort of rip up an agreement that the other three governments have agreed to on the Scarborough Subway, and then you turned around and said, oh, while I'm here, ripping up that agreement and telling you that I'm not going to proceed with something that my government agreed to proceed with, uh, I'd like some more money for uh, the help that is disabled to, to, to do some of the things you asked about. I think you have to make the case, and that's why it's so important to identify who's best going to be able to work with these other governments, especially the provincial government. I think they said they're going to spend $29 billion on transit. I think $15 billion of it or some number approximating that is going to come to Toronto. And it would take a very small amount indeed to do some of the things we've talked about today, including accelerating uh, some of the stations and other things that are years out. And that will do two things. It will make the transit system more accessible, and it will pay returns to those governments, I would argue, to them, because more people will be able to go to work and live a full life and be contributing citizens as they so much want to be. And so I think that's what you have to do. Thank you, Mr. Troy. Uh, so perhaps we could give them a chance to respond to this as well. Rob, you want to go first? Or, all right, Selena, what? Okay. Um, again, I think by privatizing and outsourcing certain functions, particularly operations and maintenance of the TTC, that would free up a lot of capital uh, for the things that are really important, including uh, being legally compliant and accessibility. Um, 
Uh, the same thing the city did with garbage. That saved the city a lot of money when we outsourced it to a, a private company. And we should be doing the same with the TTC. It's gotten too large to manage, and uh, projects are taking too long. Jeff? Hi, Maria. Thanks for your question. Um, it, it's interesting. Uh, what was announced this week uh, with respect to the TTC uh, running a deficit of $240 million with respect to the budget to get all stations accessible by 2018? Uh, the surplus that was announced was $168 million, which is less than $80 million difference. Now, I know it's all, not always apples to apples or oranges to oranges when it comes to surpluses versus projects that need funding, but I think uh, myself as mayor, uh, that would be a huge priority to say, let's take care of uh, the people who need taking, taking care of first, and then let's worry about some of the other projects that are going to happen anyway, whether it's subways or LRTs or hover cars. Thanks, Ari. Thank you, Steve. Um, Maria, my answer is uh, I'm going to take a comment, as Chow said, which is we have to put our money where our mouth is. In this city, when you're promising, as many candidates do, that you're not going to increase property taxes beyond the rate of inflation, you're actually saying to anybody who understands basic economics, you're not going to pay for the things that many of these people in this room need. So I'm very close. I'm very close to Mr. Signacki and his position on taxes of every sort, and I spell that out in my platform on my site. But the bottom line is, if we're going to call ourselves in this room Toronto the good, we need to prove with our wallets that we're Toronto the much better. Rob. Thank you, thanks for the question as well. Um, I think both David and Olivia raised really good points about the LRT and how much saving that would actually create for the city to put into things that are more necessary. As well, another thing that hasn't really come up yet is that um, we already have buses and we've talked about expanded bus networks and how we can utilize resources that we already have to make those networks more accessible to the rest of the city, which in the short term could actually create savings that we could also use towards that as well. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Uh, we're gonna try and squeeze two more questions in, so 